Did you check out our last NAS video? We briefly explained Raid 5, but if you felt a bit lost, we're going to explain the array of different raids. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss a video. Raid is a redundant array of independent disks. Reading drives will treat multiple drives as one storage pool. A RAID creates redundancies of your data in different ways, depending on the type, mirroring, striping, and parity. All RAIDs besides RAID 0 will allow one disk to fail, or more depending on the RAID type. And all of your data can be recovered and rebuilt. If you think about RAIDing hard disks, it's strongly recommended to use the same hard disk for the RAID. Different speeds and different sizes of disks can create problems and can sacrifice space of the bigger drives if paired with a smaller drive. There is six commonly used RAID types. If you're RAIDing your hard disk in your PC or setting up a NAS or server, once you learn their functions and advantages, you can make a better decision on what RAID type will benefit you the most for your situation. First up, RAID 0. You need a minimum of two drives for RAID 0. It stripes your data between the two drives. You have part of the data on one drive and the other part on drive two. This allows you to take advantage of the write speeds of both drives and the space of both drives. You'll potentially be doubling your read-write speeds and take advantage of the full capacity of two drives. However, RAID 0 does not give you a redundancy with your data. If one drive fails, all the data is gone. Since the data is striped between the two drives, if this is your rate of choice, you must have a backup in your system in place. You're doubling your speed and storage space, but also doubling the risk of drive failure. An example when to use RAID 0 is for video editing. You'll have the increased speed to keep up with your workflow, and ideally, you have a copy of the footage already backed up somewhere else. Next, RAID 1. You'll need a minimum of two drives for RAID 1. All of your data is mirrored to the second drive. You get the speed of one drive and capacity of one drive, with the safety and sound of mind if one drive fails. All your data is still there. However, you have the cost of two drives for the space and speed of one drive. RAID 1 is very good for important files that don't need the mass amount of storage and speed, but in need of a fail safe. Good for accounting, finished project, stuff like that. Now RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. You need a minimum of four drives the data is striped across two drives and mirrored on the other two drives. You get the speed of the two drives and redundancy with the mirrored drives. One drive can fail and all your data is still safe. Quick note, two drives can fail, but it will have to be between the striped data. If one from the mirror dies, your files will be gone. This is one of the most expensive RAID arrays. RAID 10 will be able to rebuild the info from a dead drive very quickly due to mirroring. It's essentially just copying it over. Mirroring is pretty straightforward. Striping makes sense, but parity, that's where things get a little complicated. It uses a very complex system to parity the data across the drive. Next up, let's talk about RAID 5. RAID 5 uses a combination of striping and parity of the data. The data is striped across all drives, as well as parity of the data striped across all drives. The parity is information required to rebuild the data in the event of a drive failure. Parity is blocks of data that are spread across all the drives in RAID. RAID 5 uses the capacity of one drive for the parity. So if a hard disk fails, the other two drives will hold enough information that allow the RAID 5 to rebuild the data that was lost on the failed drive. For example, drive number two fails. You replace it with a brand new number two drive and the data will be rebuilt like it was never missing. This will take some time. Another thing to note about RAID 5 is if it's used without a RAID controller, write speed will be very slow to having to stripe and parity the drives. RAID 5 is a great balance between performance, data security, and shared capacity between drives. RAID 5 is ideal for RAIDs with limited drive capacity. RAID 6 is a popular choice when writing lots of drives together. RAID 6 requires a minimum of four drives. RAID 6 uses parity like RAID 5, but adds another parity block so it has double the redundancy. It allows two drives to fail. Your data is still able to be repopulated. However, RAID 6 decreases write performance since it must create two parities. RAID 6 will take the capacity of two drives to create the parity of the data. There are other less common types of RAID that you'll probably not run into with basic use. For example, RAID 50. RAID is not a backup, but a redundancy to protect you from hard disk failure. In the event that more hard disks fail than your RAID allows, all of your data will be lost. And, of course, it does not protect from human error. An axe of the gods. Pro tip, replace a failed drive in RAID ASAP. You know how life works. A drive fails and you say, Oh, I'll get another one next week. And boom, another one fails before you had a chance. Hope that clears the air on some of the RAID types. 
So now let's talk about our MEXP and new MEXP prizes. So first up, congrats to the Tech Junkie for winning January's MEXP prize with their comment, randomly drawn by RNG, that's silver though. Speaking of which, the new AMD Radeon 7 card launches tomorrow, so it's also my birthday. Nice. Pretty cool birthday present, I think. Not gonna happen. Anyways, guys, a very fitting MEXP prize giveaway for this month, since we're talking a lot about hard drives, Seagate, NASes. Well, Seagate came up and they're like, hey, let's give away two Ironwall 4 terabyte NAS drives for anyone that might wanna, well, build a NAS. And with what you guys learned from this video and the last one, you can do RAID 0 or RAID 1. Pretty cool. So guys, you know me, I'm Steve for Memory Express. You know how MEXP works. Just comment on the videos for the month of February. Any comments will do, preferably. Hey, really cool video, I like that. But then again, it's all up to RNG at the end of the month and random number generators, well, they pick who they want. So don't forget to comment on all the videos. Share with your friend, share with your dog, your babysitter, house sitter, car sitter, neighbor. Get the videos out there. Help us grow our community, guys. We really appreciate it. And of course, you know where to find us on social media. Facebook and Twitter are the same, at Memory Express. And our Instagram, official Memory Express. Thank you guys again for watching the video. I'll see you next week. Or Friday, I guess. Make sure we're fine this week. Just for you guys.